Hey guys, Danny here. I'm coming to you today with a review of one of my favorite Oracle decks, the Earthbound Oracle. This is done by Andrew Liam Swartz at SkullGarden.net. I think he also has an Etsy shop. Um, that's where I got mine off of Etsy. Um, he also has a Lenormand deck, which is beautiful, and the Wooden Tarot, which I heard he just completed his guidebook for, which is exciting because I know a lot of people were asking about it. Um, I don't have his other decks. I'm still, like, I was really considering them. Um, but this has been a favorite of mine. So um, go check his stuff out, please. Um, it's really, really good. This was just a plain and simple little box. As you can tell, mine's just, y'all, it's just busted to shit. But that's okay. Um, that shows how much I love it. Um, just a regular little paper uh, box. Nothing too fancy. I just kept it in there. It may be time to lose it and put, put it in a little bag, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Um, really good size. They're small. They're like smaller than, I find they're smaller than regular playing cards. I have the Game of Thrones tarot right here just to kind of give you an idea. Um, Game of Thrones is um, about a regular size tarot deck, maybe a little more narrow, maybe, um, but you can see the size difference. So it is a smaller deck and I have large hands, like there, I have long fingers, but I do like a smaller deck. And the way that these are set, the simplicity of it, I don't think it needs to be any bigger, to be quite honest, just because I think it would just get overwhelming um, because it's such a simple, simplistic design. So, yes, really love that. Um, like I said, I've been using this for quite some time. I would say well over a year. And they do have a black background, which sometimes I'm, I'm a little kind of hesitant with black backgrounds because they tend to scratch and wear and um you know become a little icky after a while but as much as I use these cards they've they haven't worn too bad I don't find I mean you can see on a, a couple of them there's maybe a scratch or two um but not enough to say it's not a good quality. I find that this is a fantastic quality. The front end, you can see where they've just worn a bit. But for as much as I've used them, for as long as I've had them, I find the wear and tear on these cards are really good. About the same as a playing card as far as the cardstock quality. Really good matte finish, as I'm sure you can kind of tell. Um, these are not shiny cards at all, which I also love because being on Instagram, um, when I do decide to take pictures of my cards, uh, it comes out really well, which I think showcases um, his really amazing artwork. So I think that that's really great as well. Not a requirement because I don't use every deck to take a picture of. But just saying, if you are on Instagram, if you're in a tarot community and you like to share your cards and share your experiences, it does come off really good on um, camera. So it does. Just a little side note on that. <laughs> but <clears throat> as you can tell, again, this is the the back of the card. And it, it just from that, it's like super simple. It's really beautiful. It's got the wood. Uh, yeah, you can see it now. I was like, it kind of just looks plain, but it is like a wooden look to it. And you can see all the variations of the wood here, which I think is really cool. Um, Cause if I'm not mistaken, he does all his artwork on wood. So uh, that's really cool. I like how it's not all like super the same. Definitely one of my favorite indie decks, if you can't tell, I'm just gushing about it. I really can't think of any cons. So I think that's a good, a good thing. I use these not only for myself, but for others. Um, during readings, I have done full readings with just these cards, which sometimes is not uh, always easy with oracle cards, but I find that this works really well in whatever you want to do with them. 
Um, they definitely don't fit into one type of box, which is always great because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I'll get cards and I'm just like, you can only use it for this. Like more power to somebody else who can use it for anything other than one specific item um, because it just doesn't feel that way to me. But these I find are versatile. <clears throat> they work really well with whatever I ask. So um, yeah, 100 on that. I want to um, kind of go through the cards and kind of show you um, all the different ones. Uh, I didn't find that not having a guidebook was a hindrance at all. Granted, it would have been really cool to um, maybe just talk about the artwork that's on there and like his idea of the symbolism and why he chose it. But I'm always interested in that. Like I'm a huge nerd when it comes to the why. You know, like, I want to know why you chose that. I want to know what it means to you. Not to influence what I believe it is, but just to hear another point of view. But I'm always learning that way. That's just my personality. I want to know your, your why. You know, I know why it's my why, but I want to hear your why. So each one of the elements is represented in their symbolism right sorry <laughs> i'm fumbling right here so in their symbolism so fire abundance i love this abundance card okay so in one of my other videos um my art of life tarot matter of fact it's right there right there there it is um i said about how i was a huge fan of the tutors and anything tutor-esque king henry um, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Mary, anything like that. But I'm also a huge fan of the show that used to be on whatever, Showtime, HBO, whatever it was. And when I see this abundance card, I think of King Henry. There's a scene where, uh, I don't remember if he's just waking up or he's just going somewhere, or whatever. But he's such a sexual character. He's such, um, he's got such opulence around him. He's got, um, the air of fertility, if you will. Um, he's obsessed with it. So I always think of the scene where he's eating um, this huge pomegranate and the seeds are just falling out and it's just crazy. But that's what comes to mind. Just that, that extra, that fertility, that abundance, that, um, you know, opulence, the whims of a king, right? I, that's just what pops into my head when I see it. Creativity. I love this because I love watercolors. Like I do watercolors every once in a while. And um, I just love that representation of creativity because that's where my creativity flows. So I just love it. We have bond. Sorry. Ceremony. Intuition. Release. Cycle. I really like this. It's got the snake. It's got the moons. I do take his symbolism here. Healing. Voice. Vision. You know, I even use these cards to do um, a little monthly challenge once. And I really loved it. Because they gave you something to really dive into. So this one, I always think of a Hogwarts letter. I know it's not set the same way, but that's the first thing that pops into my mind. Did I mention I was a nerd? Because I'm a huge nerd. And Harry Potter is my jam, y'all. I've been with Harry since I was 13 years old. Right when it first came out. And, um, so yeah. Everything can go back to Harry Potter. Everything. Labor is also a favorite of mine. It's beautiful. It's got the B. It's got, sorry. I'm causing the... <laughs> my whole screen to dim. I don't know if it's going to show that, but I can see it. 
Um, it's got the flower, it's got the honeycomb, it's got the honey dripping out, and it's just beautiful because it makes me think of, you know, labor, we often think as toil and um, hard work, this, that, and the other, but it pays off, it's beautiful in the end, so I really love it. So, just a beautiful piece of art for the self. Beautiful piece of art in general. I love it. Got the tree in the background. And life. The idea of the sun rising. Home. I really like this card in the implication of sometimes home is dependent upon someone else as well. I like that. Sleep. I always think of a mama bear when I see this card. And mostly because when it comes to um, Lenormand, if, if I'm reading something about myself, the bear will always come up. Bear, I love it. Fear. I really like the fear card because you'll notice that it looks like it penetrates the rabbit all these arrows, but it doesn't. So it's just literally the fear that if you go out, you'll be hurt, but that's not reality. So symbolism is on point, y'all, to me. Protect. Achievement. And I dig all the crystals that are everywhere. Water, very pretty. Failure. I love all the different aspects of this, um, this artwork. Like it almost looks like an eye right here on the back of the moth. They're drawn to the flame. It looks like a crash. It looks like, almost like it could be burning at both ends. So there's so much here as well. It's just beautiful. In general, this is a beautiful card. I think it has a lot to do with those purple um, waves of smoke. It almost looks like moon or the sun rising in the background. It's got the infinity symbol and the skull. I just, I don't know. I just think it's a lovely piece of artwork in general. Wisdom, unlocking. Very unique balance card. I would like to hear you guys' opinion about this balance card, like where you see it. For me, I've always found it super interesting. Um, the balance, I always think about, there's a spider in here. So like sometimes the balance between like different people, different um, animals in nature, um, balances in like a wing on either side balancing the feathers on the ends of the antlers. You know, I kind of think about the balances of nature and how delicate they are. Um, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Because again, this like deer slash creature is really interesting to me. So I'd like to hear from you guys what you think about this card and what comes to mind for you. Um, Cause like I said, it's always been very interesting to me but I also, like, I get, I get it, but I, I don't get it in some ways. So I just want to hear what you guys think. Just like I said, I get balanced in so many ways, but in, in the bigger picture, like, why choose this for balance? So let me know what you think. Drop it in the comments. Do a video on it if you have these cards. Tell me. Gift. Oh, sorry. It's also very, very feminine in this card, which I really, I just dig. I dig them all. <laughs> really great transformation card, in my opinion, because you see the different stages of the transformation, as well as, you know, you have this new growth. Um, it evokes the idea of springtime to me as well, which is, you know, 
rebirth and transforming. So I really like the art on this. Luna. Travel. Again, I feel like the butterfly is going somewhere, but there's a snowflake at the bottom here. There's the sun. Maybe I'm just not seeing an, another sim, like the other symbolism there. Um, I like the travel card. I'm just not a favorite of mine, I guess, because the symbolism doesn't speak to me as much. Um, I, though monarchs do migrate, don't they? But again, like not super, it doesn't like immediately say to me travel, right? That's all I mean. The growth, I love how it's, you have growth coming out of the jar as well like you can't bottle it no matter how hard you try another beautiful just I like the purples and the reds and the contrast here for toxic permanence resistance I like how you have the rock in the middle. There is growth on there, which I think is another level of symbolism here. But it's like you can hold strong, but even that stone eventually is gonna give way to the water. So I like that resistance. Packed, packed with symbolism. Reflect on the many different aspects of the self. Perseverance. And Kana. The mystery within. Ooh. I find this image, I, I don't really know why. I mean, I know it's just a shell with the crystals growing out of it but like for whatever reason it reminds me of a monster which I guess you know the mysteries the arcana you know maybe it is something scary maybe it's not but like I don't know why this invokes such a like oh it's a monster it's kind of scary to me I don't know why now I know he's gotten a little bit of pushback about this card because it is the rabbit's foot for luck with the crystals coming out. It doesn't really bother me all that much. Um, maybe because I grew up in South Louisiana where we have a lot of hunters. We, um, that's how our families got and still get, you know, our food and um, things like that. It's just never really bothered me. I can understand how it does bother some, so. Um, if you don't like the idea even of animal cruelty, then maybe just toss it out or don't get the deck or whatever, but it doesn't bother me. Time. And it's got the Zodiac, which is another way to keep time. The hourglass, the sun and moon. So all these different ways of keeping time. And then rocks, the earth, you can keep time by the layers. So just any time you need, all the times. Simplicity. Tara. I always feel like this speaks so much to the shifts and movements and like how the water will create its own path sun rising there's a lot of stuff going on in here in my opinion that can be pulled from this card and like you can even see all the little 
layers underneath and how it was pulled apart as well. Great stuff. Wealth. It's the last one. Got our little nuggets. Looks like rubies. I guess you could say rubies. It could also look like pomegranate seeds if you wanted to see that as well. Along with all the amethyst that makes its <laughs> makes its appearance in this whole deck. So all in all, great imagery, in my opinion, um, really works with your intuition. It can work literally if that's not your thing. Um, but in general, like I said, I use this for myself. It reads really well. It does, I find, most of the time speak in riddles. Um, and what I mean by that is where some card decks are like, this is what it is. That's what you're looking for. There's no question about it. I feel like this one likes to tell you, this is where it could be. Does that make sense? Um, it shuffles really well this way as well as, you know, that way. The rifle and the overhand. Um, a good, a good purchase, well worth it. I wish I could remember about how much I paid for it. This one might have been around the thirty dollar range, up or down. I, I honestly can't remember, but regardless, it was worth it. I use it quite a bit, and the artwork is sound. The quality is there so if you're thinking about purchasing it I do absolutely recommend this deck I do it looks good with so many other cards because um, you know like sometimes you want to get that same feel you want um, you want them to drive together if you're using an Oracle deck along with a tarot deck sometimes it doesn't matter but sometimes you just really want that vibe and they really work well with the tarot um, they work well with other oracle cards. I have the Oracle of Oddities, which I like to use these two together. Um, and that's about it. You know, it's well worth the buy. But like I said before, I want to see what you guys think. I want to see um, what these images evoke in, in y'all. So if you do a video or if you just want to tell me in the comments, do that i absolutely love to hear from you guys um you can subscribe if you want i do more videos like this i'm gonna have a bunch of in-depth reviews on um the decks that i'm working with right now i'm gonna be working with them for the next week or so into april if not all of april before i do deck reviews on them that's gonna be the art of life tarot that's sitting on my altar right there um as well as the game of thrones which I'm itching to do. Um, <laughs> I'm itching to do that review because I have just dove right in. Right in. It's exciting. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon.